Hello, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. I hope everyone had a great Memorial weekend. Anybody do anything special? What'd y'all do this weekend? Nobody wants to talk? Hey, Tanisha, it's me. Hey, Debbie. I did something different uh, that I had never done before. I went out on the Victory Casino cruise because like, I'm uh, from the port. Uh, how was it? It was it was nice. I, I'm not a gambler, though, but yeah, I just yeah. a friend of mine wanted to go, so I went with her. Mm -hmm. And it was nice. They have a little deck up on top. My phone died right as I got, like, 30 minutes into getting on. So I couldn't get a lot of pictures. I'm waiting for my friend to send me hers, uh -huh. but um, I'm going to post, but they had a little, like a little bar on the top with a little deck and they had music, you know, Jamaican music and Island music going. And then they had like on one deck, they had a little dance floor, but they, they then they had a girl singing like the last 45 minutes before we went back to port. But it was nice just walking around and I went with four of the girls and they were gambling. So I'd watch them for a while, but it was nice. It was nice. I'm glad you had a good time. I went on the Victory Casino cruise twice mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't during summertime. So we had to stay inside. And like you, I am not a gambler and <laughs> I had a miserable time <laughs> on it oh. <laughs> yeah it, it number one like I said I'm not a gambler so once I spend 20 bucks and it's gone it's gone and that is a very long cruise um if you're mm -hmm. not a gambler and it was freezing in there was it freezing when you went inside what it wasn't no fly? it was I got cold I got a little cold once and I went outside and warmed up but other than that I was all right and I wore short sleeves so okay. and it wasn't crowded at all and they said that the, the gamblers that I went with said that was unusual because it's usually more crowded than what it is when we were on there okay but okay. I guess because of the holiday there wasn't a lot of people there, right so right yeah, yeah, well, I couldn't go outside to warm up because it was just as cold outside as it was. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. It was overcast like part of the time. So that yeah. made it even better. We got to sit outside and enjoy the water. So, yeah, awesome. that was fun. Awesome. Ebony says she saw the Little Mermaid. She's at work. That's awesome. Hope it was greetings from Chicago. Uh, let's see. Well, my daughter graduated on Saturday, so oh, I'm officially, I got one gone. <laughs> so, Congrats. Well, I'm super proud of her, though. <laughs> yeah, that is you. awesome. Awesome. Oh, we have Director Candace Avery White. What you doing? What you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. <laughs> what y'all do this weekend? What did we do? Oh, we had a small little barbecue. Okay, what'd you yes. cook? And also, I'm waiting on my sister to have her baby. So we went to the hospital for 24 hours. No baby. That oh. home. So I guess we're going to go walk in and try to get that baby out of there. Oh, uh, the baby said, nah, I don't want to mess up the uh, Memorial Day. I'm going to come after. <laughs> Give you something to celebrate. What'd y'all cook, uh, cook for the um, the grill? What did we have? <laughs> we, had, we had some chicken, a little steak, a little kebab. <laughs> I love me some steak. That's awesome. All right. So today's topic, everyone, we're going to jump right into it, is what are, so typically in the industry of network marketing, the summertime is the worst month. People go on uh, summer days, meaning they just like doze off on their business. Um, you know, you're out with the kids, you're traveling, and people just tend to let their business just fall to the wayside um, during the summer months. And I see we have um, Director Katrina White on. Um, it's very evident for us directors because we see it in the numbers. The numbers, the, the 28th looks worse and worse throughout the summertime. Director White, can you speak on your experience um, being in the business and how the numbers take a dive during the summer, people just kind of fall to the wayside and it's like, oh my goodness. Oh, oh my God. Um, hey everyone, um, director Wynn and myself was talking about this yesterday because 
the attrition is definitely hitting mm -hmm. um, since the summertime has hit. Um, why people go into a summer days, I for myself, I really don't understand why, because in the summer months, we are outside, we are spending time with our families, we are doing different activities and things like that. So for us as travel professionals, if we're focusing on travel, right, that's the prime time to be marketing and promoting our business when we're doing travels ourselves or even looking for activities ourselves to do with our family stuff like that to promote but also can you know that that works twofold because as people seeing that you're enjoying yourself with your family getting paid for something that they're probably doing in turn you can share the business with them um but yes in the summertime uh, attrition definitely does hit. It seems like um, since people are outside, they're not as focused on their business. They're not giving it time that's needed to their business. Um, and it doesn't pick back up until pretty much it's like fall kids go back to school and we're coming back into the house. <laughs> exactly, exactly, which is strange. I could tell you uh, for this month from May 1st, to where we are right now, our team has lost 101 people. 101 people. And it looks like, let's see, maybe 35 came up after Memorial Day. Um, but right now we're down 101 from where we were on May 1st. So y'all be crying about your little two or three that go on credit hole. Imagine losing 101. And to that point, this is why you cannot take your foot off the gas in your business, right? You may hit gold building, you're like, ah, I made it. No, you haven't. You just got in the game. <laughs> you got to keep running. You got to turn the corner because if one person falls off, you back down to a silver builder, right? Oh, I hit 2020. No, you got to keep running. Because again, one person falls off, um, DIT, okay, great, keep moving. Because if one person falls off, you back to a gold builder. <gasps> one star, I'm at 100. No, keep going. Because if one person falls off, you back to a gold builder. You got to keep going. And then the thing that I, I don't think a lot of people realize is once you lose momentum, it is so hard to get it back. It is so hard. So running from your next promotion has to be something that is deep down inside of you to the point where you, it's almost like you can't turn it off. You, you, your hustle becomes your, your everyday, your normal thing. And if you're not working your business, you struggle because you're like, something ain't right. Like it just don't feel like I can't, it is very, very difficult for me to turn off my drive when it comes to this business. It's like, I'm always, always working my business. Everything I do, every decision I make in my life, I always think about how is it going to affect the business, right? I'm planning to go somewhere on vacation. I'm already thinking, how am I going to use that to market my business? So it's one thing to be in planet marketing. It's another when planet marketing is in you. And when it's in you, I'm telling you, you cannot turn it off. It's, it's just like breathing. And that's where you want to be if you want to win at a high level. And so it starts now. It starts with how are you going to operate your business over these next four months? Right? Got June, July, August, September. How are you going to work your business during these next four months when historically in network marketing, this is when people's businesses go to die? What are you going to do? So let's talk about that. I want everyone to share one thing that you can do over the next four months consistently so that you don't lose the momentum in your business. And if you don't have no momentum, just like Director White said, summertime's a great time to create momentum in your business. So who wants to share? I want to hear from everyone. 
And if you can't speak, just put it in the chat. What are some things that you can do over the next four months consistently to keep the momentum going in your business? Audrey? Um, hi. Um, I think one thing that I will continue to do, be more consistent in doing is um, advertising and, and posting on my stories and on Facebook um, about my business and um, tell them about good sales that's going on to, to attract their, get their attention mm -hmm. more. Um, I like doing videos and stuff and I'll probably do some more lives as well so good. I can get their attention on, on travel tips and things like that to, to draw their attention. That's good. And I'm, I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to be taking some notes um, because these are some things that I think all of us could use so definitely posting, um, continue to post reels and go live. Talking about the business is a great way to keep the momentum going. So we're going to say lives and reels. And again, and this can work for both sides of the business, right? Because we want to have balance. So definitely promote um, promoting travel specials and deals and things like that. Definitely a great way. And then as far as you traveling, when you travel to promote on the marketing side, what you want to include in your post or your message is that you're a travel business owner and it puts you in a position to be able to travel more because you're in the business. So that's how you can use your own personal travels to not just attract bookers, but also to attract builders. It's about talking about how because you are a travel business owner, it affords you the opportunity to travel more, right? Because you're a travel business owner, you're making more money, so you can travel more. And then you do a call to action who's... Um, if you're looking for a way to increase your lifestyle and be able to design your ideal life, private message me for more information. That's how you're gonna attract the builders. If you wanna attract bookers, then you can, you know, or yeah, bookers, then you can, um, you know, you talk about the deals and the specials and the stuff like that. And you can attract clients as well who wanna book with you or they're planning a vacation. Shamika? Uh, look, I wrote a whole list of things down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I would say for me personally, maybe like having like lab sessions with like the team or the people that show up. Mm -hmm. um, like having little lab sessions where we call people, we do income producer activities. That way we could like feed off each other. We got, you know, the leaders there that can answer our questions right then and there, you know, critique us. Um, I think that was an excellent way to build momentum, you know, in the team and in yourself to get you going. And also just sticking to your calendar um, and your DMO. So that's what I've been doing. Yes, that's very good. I love that. I love that. Let me go to the notes because I see there's a lot of people in the chat. Um, Felicia said, get your DMO out, out of the way early in the day. So that you do have the rest of the day to, you know, to have the fun stuff that you normally do. I love that idea. Get it done early. Uh, Danette said, plan my tomorrow the night before and peak interest. Yep. Love that. Denise said, add it to your calendar or alarm clocks always carrying peak cards. Absolutely. Jasmine says she's just getting started, so she needs to start marketing her business more. Absolutely, absolutely. And work with your director, Jasmine, because um, they should have you on, uh, you know, be calling plays for you to do. So you just want to run the plays that they call. Bethany said, stay plugged in to meetings and corporate events. Absolutely, because if you don't stay plugged in, if you unplug yourself from the source, your business is going to die it will no longer become interesting to you and it'll just become that thing that you have on the shelf that gets all dusty. You got to stay plugged in. Uh, Stacy said, keeping, 
keep being verbal, talking about your business, especially when out and about, being consistent. Absolutely. Just like Director White said, you're out more in the summertime. So that means naturally you should be talking more about, have more opportunities to talk about your business to people that you're meeting, right? Again, get comfortable with having those conversations and approaching people, right? When you're out and about and you're meeting strangers, there's two things that always come up when you're speaking with a stranger. And that is how do you make your money and how do you spend your time? So when you ask them, you know, what is it that you do? And they tell you, guess what they got to ask you? Well, what is it that you do? And so you have to have that, you know, that quick response of what it is that you do, right? My go-to response is I'm a travel business owner and I help position people who want to earn extra income, start their own home-based travel business. Do you love to travel? And then I always follow it up with a question. Do you love to travel? And then that opens the door for me to peek them. Well, if I could show you a way, blah, 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 right? Bethany said, look for, look for or make opportunities to share the business. That's exactly what I was just saying. I love that. Debbie said, consistency and peaking and growing my running list and posting in my groups. Yeah. Marketing more, study more. Stephanie says, I've been meeting new people lately, so I need to execute my actions and stay consistent. Exactly. When you meet a new person, remember, our goal is to take them from the P to the S to the three. That's all you want to do is move people through our process of PS3. Uh, Stacy said, making sure my, uh, my business, making sure my business reaches more. Stacy, I don't know what you were trying to say. <laughs> You want to come off mute? Stacey? Yes. <clears throat> Try, <clears throat> excuse me. I was trying to say, making sure my your business cards get in more hands. Maybe yeah. people at the moment don't know what it is and, and not paying attention to it, throw it in their pocketbook mm -hmm. and keep moving. When they get home, you do clean out your bag. You do look what you, you know, picked up throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a, a better way of getting my cards out so that they can be looked at later and go into places where I can leave a card. Yes. Yes. I love that. I love that idea. Uh, Devorah said, have her list ready so you can execute. Exactly. You, everyone should have um, a weekly goal of how many people you're going to peak. How many videos are you going to get out for the week? How many three-way calls are you going to schedule for the week? But most importantly, again, how many people are you going to peak for the week? And then if on Sunday night, you go to your running list and you grab a batch of people that you're going to peak for the week, you are more likely to meet, to meet your weekly goal because you already have the list of people you're going to peak. You're not spending your time throughout the week scrolling and trying to figure out, okay, who can I peak? Who can I peak? That's not being intentional about your business. When you're intentional, you already have your list of people you're going to peak for the week and you will hit your goal. Uh, let's see. Ebony says, maybe summertime virtual vision board. That's good. May keep momentum going over the summer, team building to keep people engaged. Yep, I love all of those. Continue to market my business, staying consistent. That's good, Tangela. And Martina, being plugged in, follow your calendar. If it's not on there, don't do it. Yep, and continue to advertise and promote my business and stay consistent. The problem with the whole calendar is people aren't putting stuff on their calendar. So if it ain't on there, they ain't doing nothing. They wasn't doing nothing before the calendar and now they're not doing anything after. So it's it's about scheduling those income producing activities on the calendar. Um, and Shamika, this is the one I was gonna just talk about. Hotel inspections, visual que vision quests um, with the team and have an accountability partner and team building exercise. So that was one of the ones that I was going to suggest is to do... Um, a site inspection with your team. So identify a resort, a hotel, someplace. 
It could be in your city. It could be in another state. And reach out to the resort schedule and say, hey, I have a group of you know, travel advisors. We want to come and tour the property. That would be a great team building exercise to do um, with the team to keep people engaged because this is the time when people are traveling. And so coming up with ways, another thing that you can do is in our in Teletravel back office, we have the activities booking engine. And so what about going to the activities booking engine and finding an activity in your state and then getting your team members together and y'all go do it together. Director White, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think those are all really great ideas because we actually have um, Candent scheduled two site inspections at luxury hotels here in Chicago for our team in June. Um, we have been, there has been a lot of uh, travel showcases going on here in Chicago and um, we've been going to them as a team as well. Um, as far as activities, I've been prior to the compliance corner that came out Friday, I was telling my team to utilize that Viator link um, because we actually have yacht rentals through um, in there in multiple cities. And I uh, put out a post for here in Chicago. That post went viral. Um, since putting it out, it has almost 4,000 shares. I've had um, 2,000 new followers um, from that. I've also uh, gained new business partners as well as bookings that I'm getting through the Viator link. I have sold six yacht rentals so far nice. and each of them are yielding me at minimum $230 in commission for each one, right? And those activities are gonna happen now because it's the summertime, right? Ain't nobody will know yachts in Chicago. Uh, after August. Um, so those are all great things to do, continuing to peak interest. Like my main thing is peak interest. Everything that I do post promote, whether it's travel related, um, always is to generate more leads to peak interest when it comes to the business and helping others getting started. Um, but personal development, you know, being a good steward of your business, and um, another thing that I do, um, I always seek out free networking opportunities within my area as well to go out and meet people. So um, tomorrow, Candace and I are going to a networking event for the Black Chamber of Commerce here in Chicago um, because I have a traditional business outside of this. So I like to put myself in spaces with other entrepreneurs um, and to learn just more things about business overall um, since I have multiple businesses, but I have that additional business because of the extra income that I made through here at Planet Marketing. Um, because a lot of times I think people think we're saying make this your end all be all, but you can use this to fund your additional ventures, right? Traditional businesses does not cost $200 to start right. with a $60 a month overhead. That business was almost $10,000 to start. And I used the money from this. And then I, I found me like a free entrepreneurial school to go here to learn more things. I found out that um, my travel business is like a silent partner for my traditional business, right? Since I use the funds from my travel business for that. So, you know, it's just about finding different ways to, to personally develop yourself. And then of course, each one teach one, then bring that back to your organization as well, because a lot of us have um, serial entrepreneurs. And like Mr. Bradley always say, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. So when you show people that you want to help them to be successful, not in this, but in all things, that also um, helps build a relationship with your organization. Exactly, exactly. And that kind of ties, ties back to, you know, when we're having these conversations with our prospects and, you know, asking them, what does their best life look like for them? What is it that they're looking to accomplish? 
right? Sometimes we do more talking and we should be doing less talking and more listening to truly, truly find out what it is that our prospect wants. And you may find that, you know, maybe they have some type of, you know, 501c, um, you know, nonprofit business that they're really passionate about, right? It might be, you know, children, you know, children that are in foster care or something. And let's say that's their passion. Well, show them how this business opportunity can help them um, do more for whatever their passion is, whatever nonprofit they want to participate in, um, because you need resources, you know, nonprofit does not mean free. <laughs> right? You still need resources to run your nonprofit. And so where are you getting that money from, right? They got to raise money. They, they run based on donations. Um, but here by using Planet Marketing, you can generate income uh, to help fund whatever their nonprofit, you know, passion is. Um, Devorah said, move with a sense of urgency uh, and PS3 goals. Yep. Being more consistent with the PS3. Rochelle says share tips weekly on travel, on reels and other platforms and the opportunity. Upload business partners on Facebook two to three times a week, right? She's talking about announcing a new business partner to show that the company is growing. Um, meet up business meetings on Zoom. Sh share business to the Uber drivers. Yes. That's a good one because she says she uses them um, frequently and add more friends on Facebook. All great. I love that. I love that. Uh, Denise said, we are doing a wine tasting with our team and a family event later in the summer. That's great. Market that wine tasting. Like the weeks leading up to it, um, you can be promoting it and inviting people to book with you for activities for the summer if they're looking for activities to do. Um, and then also promote it from the marketing side that again, these are all your business partners. These are the types of things that we do together because there's a lot of people out there that are lonely, don't have a lot of friends, no family members. And so they're looking to be part of something and so by showing you and your team going out and doing things together, um, that's going to be attractive to a lot of people. Uh, let's see. Let me go to Team Lux Platinum, see if anybody has any comments in there. Hey, Tyrese, I see you. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Director Burke. Sandra said, giving out peak cards. Yep. Hey, Lucette. All right, let's see. Um, Josephine, she said, being consistent on social media, all social media platforms that she's on, hand out business cards in her neighborhood. I love that. So let's talk about that. I don't know if you all remember, but... Um, I don't celebrate Halloween, like that's not my thing, um, but I am in a new neighborhood. And so last Halloween, uh, we had music going in our garage and you know the lighting and stuff. And I had a big, big jar um, or actually a big container of candy that was to be given out to the kids. But then I had my business cards to give out to the adults. So the kids got the candy, the business, the uh, adults got my business card. And I gave out both the planet, the peak interest for, you know, the business side, as well as my travel agency side so that my neighbors would start to know me. So maybe you all do something, especially if you moved into a new neighborhood, even if you've only been there a year, it's still new, right? Um, or just in general, maybe you make a little goodie bag um, as an introduction to who you are and what you do. So maybe you do like a little, you know, you can go to the dollar store and get those little cellophane bags or Hobby Lobby, get those little cellophane bags. And maybe you put some summer related stuff 
along with your business cards in it as a, you know, hi, I just wanted to introduce myself. So kind of like that, the way I was saying on the Nextdoor app, how you do an introduction post saying who you are, what you're about. Maybe you do something like that with your neighbors. And maybe, again, you put your business cards, maybe you put a couple of luggage tags or something, something travel related, or maybe you put some candy or something. Um, it could be anything. I don't know. What are some ideas that you could do as a, something that you could give out to your neighbors? The people that live next door to you, upstairs, downstairs, something that you could put together to give out to them um, and include your business cards and let them know, always let them know that you have a business opportunity as well, right? In my neighborhood, because I created that group, the Ladies of Providence, we're always doing stuff together. Um, and once a month, we do, we do a happy hour. Sometimes it's at someone's house, sometimes it's at the clubhouse. So there's an opportunity there uh, for me to always meet new people. We got a group of ladies who do Zumba uh, every week. I haven't made it to that yet. I need to though. Again, for two reasons. One, I need to lose weight, so I might like it. And number two, there's just a lot of ladies that go to Zumba that I haven't met yet and they need to know me, All right? So think of some things that you can do like that. So I love the idea, Josephine, of handing out your business cards to your neighbor, just elevate that, right? Go make it very clever. Something that be like, oh my gosh, this was so cool. And usually it's the little things that don't cost a lot of money that have a big impact on people, right? And, and they will remember how you made them feel. So maybe you go on Pinterest and type in um, travel gift ideas under 20 bucks or something like that. Or maybe there's something you could purchase on Amazon where you could buy a lot of it and then you just kind of break it down. You know what I mean? Split it up. I know I was looking on Amazon and they had a thing for, I, I'm into bling bling stuff. Y'all know that, right? The bling bling cups, bling bling mugs. But they had a thing where I could order like 20 of them and it wasn't a lot of money. And I was like, I wonder how they were able to put that many of them for that low of a price. But Again, you might be able to buy a bundle or a box of things and then be able to split it up and give it to your neighbors. Again, something that's not too expensive. But remember, these things that you're doing are all tax deductible. So all a tax write-off for your business, for marketing. So be clever with that. Uh, let's see. Being consistent with your DMO. Going for a hundred no's. I love that, Josephine. Yes. Um, and remain plugged in and practice the presentation. Yes, yes, yes. With practicing the presentation. Um, I know a lot of us are leveraging the big picture video, but again, if you are shooting for directorship, you need to know how to deliver that presentation. And to be honest with you, all gold builders, and above should know how to do the presentation, both sides, travel and marketing. So work on that because what is your exchange rate? You can do, you may reach out to someone, a leader for assistance with a three-way call, or you may reach out to a director and ask them if they can come on your team zoom and speak to your team pour into your team and yes we can do all of those things but the question is what can you do for us right can i call you josephine to do a three-way call for one of my prospects right can i have you let's say i have a business launch i need to do for a business partner something comes up can i leverage you to jump in and cover for me because i had an emergency come up what is your exchange rate what can you give? We know as directors what we can give to you all, but what can we leverage you for, right? Everyone, I want everyone to really practice and learn how to be the expert on the three-way call. That is the biggest thing because as we continue to grow, it can't just be the directors doing these three-way calls. If you're a gold builder, we should be able to leverage you to do a three-way call. 
Now, there's a certain format that I follow to do a three-way call. And anybody who has ever used me for their three-way call, they, they know my format. They know exactly what I'm going to say. It, it doesn't change. Um, so I encourage you. Um, and there's a training video on my YouTube channel, Lifestyle by Tanisha. On my YouTube channel, there is a training video called How to Be the Expert on a Three-Way Call. So if you feel that you're ready, right? Especially if you're a gold builder and you have not been the expert on a three-way call, I want you to work on that over the summer. Now, don't actually do the three-way call until you're ready because we don't want you messing up someone's lead, right? But it is very important that you know how to be the expert on a three-way call. Director Candice or Katrina, y'all want to talk on that, speak on that? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so yes, I definitely um, think, well, I started doing three-way calls when I was a bronze builder. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I actually wasn't a gold builder. Um, my coach at the time said that she did not need to wait for me to hit gold builder. She had already recognized that I was a leader. Mm -hmm. and um, start having me do three-way calls. And it, pretty much when the three-way call will be over, we have a call afterwards, coaching, giving me critiques. But I was also utilizing her, getting her on a lot of three-way calls. So that's how you learn the activity, even with the presentation. How you're going to learn the presentation? By going to your live local meetings, taking notes, listening to other leaders, by uh, logging into the planet marketing um, Zooms that happen on Facebook, hearing those top income earners present. Um, if your upline leaders are doing any of the Zooms, logging into those, doing um, in-home PBRs at your house and just failing for it. Um, I started doing in-home PBRs when I was a bronze builder. The first time we did it, um, my best friend was in the business at the time. Candace, myself, and him did the travel portion. And we just took like three slides each from the travel to, you know, carry the load. Senia um, zoomed in, did the marketing. But I, I want to say maybe like my third, fourth PBR at my house, Senia was sick. So she could not zoom in and do the marketing. And I had people at my house. Actually, my mom was the only one that had guests. My mom has just trusted in me and partnered with me in this business. I was only a silver builder. I don't even think Candace was a bronze builder. And my mom took Candace and I back into the kitchen. And she said, these people don't know nothing about this business. They don't know if you're going to say the right things or the wrong things. Go in that front room, do this presentation, and close out my guests. I don't partner with y'all in this business. Wow. And guess what? Candace did the travel. I did the marketing, like scared, flustered. But then guess what? After that, we no longer asked Senia to zoom in. We started doing our own presentations. We were, were able to start doing our own Zooms. For those of you all who say you want directorship, it's going to be key for you to know how to generate your own income within your business and doing those presentations because. You shouldn't have to cut if you if you're saying, oh, I want to finish this out or I have a set amount of money I want to make on a weekly basis. You should be able to take your business in your own hands and say, hey, like I could we could literally say, hey, we're going to do a Zoom tonight at seven o'clock. And put out a post, get leads, get people on and do it. So um, definitely, it, I, I wouldn't say if you know that you're a leader in your own right or you're working with your coach and they can see that you're a leader, you know this is something that you want. Also, raise your hand because with Director Burke having a team of thousands, um, even myself, I just asked Director Watkins Mutes um, when she came here to Chicago with scrubbing scrubbing the genealogy like what does that look like right with me being a new network marketer knowing exactly all the time what to look like when i'm look, looking through almost 400 people but 
raise your hand um, so your upline leader can know as well. Because when it's so many people, it's not that we as leaders are ignoring anyone. But if you don't raise your hand and let us know that you want the assistance, you want the development too, at the same time, there's no way for us to know. So definitely um, start working on those presentations, three-way calls, and get it on your leader's calendar. I love that. I love that, Director White. And you're right. It, it, we always say when a student is ready, the teacher will appear. When a student is ready, the teacher will appear. So we're waiting on all of you um, to raise your hand and say, hey, I'm ready. I'm ready. What can, you know, what can we do? Can you, you know, I'm looking to grow. I'm looking to accomplish you know, hit my next promotion. Um, and I love the idea of, yeah, it's not, okay, I'm, I'm gold, now I can. Now, there, there have been people that I have identified as bronze builders who, they, you just see the leadership in them. It just needs to be developed. So it's not that we're saying you have to be a gold builder in order to deliver the presentation or you have to be gold in order to do an onboarding or you have to be gold in order to be able to do a three-way call. Nope, because there is no one size fits all, but I will absolutely say by the time you hit gold, you should be able to do all of these things. So you're not waiting until you hit gold to start working on them. As a bronze builder, that's a good level to start working on it, coming into business. I mean, you, you, it's going to take a good year for you to learn the business, but that's just the natural level of progression, especially with delivering the presentation. Because what is our role as Planet Marketing reps? To show the plan. So how is it you don't know how to show the plan with the PowerPoint? Something is wrong if you don't know how to deliver that PowerPoint. So everyone, please, please, please work on that. Um, someone had asked, I kind of missed it. Okay. You guys are, you guys are on it. Carrie is new to the business. Welcome Carrie. And she says, I'm new to the business. What is a peak card? And it's peak P I Q U E P I Q U E. Let's spell peak, right? Um, and this is just an example, Carrie, you can take a picture of this. If you'd like, you could design your own, but it's basically a, business card that you would give to people when you don't have enough time to have a conversation with them that shows them what you do, that you have an opportunity and it gives them the opportunity to uh, the information needed to contact you for more information if it's something that they're interested in. So this is just an example of one that I do. This is what mine looks like. And then on the back, I have a QR code. This goes to the big picture video and this goes to my online calendar to request more information. But you can design your own. I've seen a lot of um, peak business cards. And if you go into your planet marketing back office um, under marketing material, you'll see lots of images that are approved by planet marketing that has their logo on it. Because we, we cannot just randomly take the planet marketing logo and put them on things. We cannot do that. Um, but Planet Marketing has some approved images with their logo already on it that you can use because we want to stay compliant. Very, very important. So that's an example of a peak interest business cards. And I saw, thank you, that some of our business partners shared images of their peak interest business cards in the chat. So thank you for that. So yes, if you have a peak business uh, card that you would like to share, go ahead and post it in the chat. Um, you can also share it in the Team Lux Platinum just to give people some different ideas. I'm all about thinking outside of the box, right? Um, oh, I like that one, that black one. That's nice. Very nice, Denise. I would encourage you, Denise, on your next one to add your picture. I truly, not that you all have to do this. This is just my own personal um, opinion is when you add your picture to your peak interest business cards, it helps people remember where they met you. And if they had a great encounter with you, you made them smile, you made them laugh, they're going to remember you. 
And the picture is going to help with that because how many of you remember what the people look like that you gathered their business cards from? You remember what they look like, but if they had their picture on it, and here's how you know it's effective. Most realtors have their picture on their business cards. Why do you think that is? Because there's a lot of real estate <laughs> agents, thousands, but you will remember the ones that have their picture on it. So I highly encourage you. Oh, I like that one, Shamika. I like the yellow because it stands out. Yep. Uh, let's see. Any other? Ebony said there are luggage favor boxes on Amazon. I like that. They are really cute. I use them for a party. Yep, that's good. And, and, and you can also go to the, um, the IntelliTravel uh, store. And they have some inexpensive stuff. One of the ones that are really inexpensive that I like from the Intello Travel Store are the little plastic pouches that you put your cell phone in. So you can go swimming with your cell phone and take pictures underwater and you don't have to worry about getting sand all in your cell phone. Those are very, very inexpensive on the, um, in the Intello Travel online store. So that might be something you wanna you know, purchase 20 of them. You know, or maybe you get a pen. You can get pens personalized with the name of your travel agency and, um, you know, your phone number. Maybe you get um, those potato chip bag clips with the magnets, right? I know I use those all the time. Those are the one favors that I get from these vendor events that I actually use. And that's the magnet that, and I use it to close the potato chip bag or the cereal bag, right? But again, if it has your travel agency contact information, that's a great favor um, to give out to neighbors and things like that. And again, the ink pens, getting ink, ink, pen, ink pens made with your travel business information, you can buy a lot of them, very inexpensive. Maybe notepads that have your information on it. Another one that's really good, um, and I used to keep these too, is the calendars. I know I had a real estate agent. Every year she would send me a new calendar, but it had her contact information and it was magnetic. So it was a calendar that I was able to put on the refrigerator. And, you know, I never forgot who she was, whatever, because it had her information on it. So think about things that people actually use on a day to day basis as opposed to something they're not really going to use, but maybe once a year. But something like a calendar, a pen, a notepad, things like that, they use all the time. And with it being summer, again, that cell phone pouch to keep the water out is a great gift as well. Any other ideas? Let me go to Team Lux Platinum. Let's see. I see people tagging other people. All right. Any other ideas anyone wants to share? Thank you, Kim. Ooh, Shay, I like your card. That's beautiful. Beverly, I love your card. It was Beverly. Yes. Very, very nice. I'm gonna, let me see if I could share my screen so I can show Beverly's card. Beautiful. Has her image, nice picture. She has her name. So uh, Beverly, there's one change I would make to this card. Actually, two. You there, Beverly? So number one, you're using this as your planet marketing. You're wearing your planet marketing hat when you're giving out this card. So you don't okay. want to put that you're a travel advisor at the bottom. Okay. 
You could put travel business owner, travel executive, marketing rep, something like that, but definitely not travel advisor. Okay. Right. And then the other thing is I would just remove the periods here. Yeah. Gotcha. Like on this one, you don't have a period. This one you don't. So either you put a period for all of them or you just take them off altogether. Thank you. You're welcome. But great, great card. I love it. Can I ask a question? Where is everybody getting it printed at? Uh, I use Vistaprint. Anybody else want to share where they get theirs printed? I use Vistaprint as well. I create Vista. mine on Canva and I also get them printed on Canva. There you go. Canva and Vistaprint. Let's take a look at this one. I was trying to get the picture, the bigger picture of it. Let me do it this way. That's the back side. I sent two, two pictures. Okay, so the only problem again with this, here's what, what's making this non-compliant is you're mixing in teletravel and planet marketing because you're giving your, your planet marketing link, you're talking about becoming an entrepreneur and all of that is great, but then you have Be Unique Travels and then you have Travels, Destination Weddings, can't do that. That's not, so here's what I want everyone to understand because if you're gonna do these P cards, they have got to be compliant. We don't want any issues. You Trust me, you do not want an email or a phone call from Amanda Restivo or from IntelliTravel, okay? When we're talking about peak cards, these are specifically to grow your planet marketing business. Okay, so I can't put my business name. Just start no. with the, okay. Nothing having to do with booking travel. It cannot have anything about that on it pertaining okay. to your IntelliTravel business. Okay, all right. These peak cards as in the, for what we're talking about, the peak cards are to grow your planet marketing business. This has nothing to do with growing your IntelliTravel business. Now, could you, Create, I mean, everybody should have Intel travel business cards for their travel agency business. So that's that's you don't need a peak card for your travel agency business. It's your regular travel agency business card, whatever that looks like for you. Um, where it was right. I have these cards for my travel business that I ordered right through Intel Travel, right? So that's what I use for my travel agency business. But in the conversation that I'm talking about now, peak interest business cards are str strictly for planet marketing, for growing your planet marketing business, for attracting people who want to earn leverage and residual income, for attracting people who want to start a home-based business. So your peak cards cannot say anything about booking travel. It can't talk about that you're a Disney specialist or that you're certified in Mexico. No, 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 no. They are specifically for you to attract people who want to book travel. I'm sorry, not to book travel, to join the business, right? Now, whenever I'm trying to design something, I will typically go to our planet marketing website, and I just use words or phrases from there, or I'll go to our PowerPoint presentation and use words or phrases from there to make sure that I'm staying compliant. And so if you look at this, right, become an entrepreneur in the $8 trillion a year travel industry, earn more, travel more, save more, experience more, create leveraged and residual income, that's a planet marketing feature right? Set your own hours, full-time or part-time, work from anywhere in the world. Where do we see this, right? In the planet marketing presentation, design your ideal life with time, freedom, 
This is all from the planet marketing presentation. So I know it's compliant. So what I would suggest, if you are someone who is unclear about what's compliant and what's not, take a picture of this, use this wording, and then make the design anything you want it to be. But if you kind of stick with this wording, you won't get yourself in trouble. Or if you do design a card, have your director look at it to make sure it's compliant before you spend the money in printing it. Because the one thing you don't want to do is create a card, spend your money, and then we tell you it's not compliant and now you got to toss them because you better not give them out because now you're putting everybody at risk. You're putting the company and we have an obligation to protect the planet. All right. Last question, Audrey, and then I have a three-way I got to do. Yes, I have a question. Um, can you use your um, IntelliTravel, your, like your business email on, on that card? Like mine's is Jet Setter Luxury Travel. Can I use that on I the wouldn't. card? Okay. I wouldn't. You should have a separate email for business and a separate email for travel. Whatever email you're mm -hmm. using for your travel agency business should just be for your travel agency business my opinion. Okay. Right. For anything, my, my business, my travel and teletravel business, it's booking at Lux Platinum Travel. Anything outside of that, I'm using Tanisha at TanishaBurke.com. Hmm. Okay. Keep it separate. Keep it separate. Okay. And then you won't run into Thank you for the information. Too. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. I didn't know. Okay. That's Thank just you. what I do. That's just what I do. Keep it separate because it doesn't make sense, in my opinion, to have a peak card where you are looking to, you know, recruit people. And then hold on one second. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to have a peak card where you're, um, you know, recruiting people, but then your email talks about booking travel like it's, it's just not professional, in my opinion. All right. All right, everyone. This was a great, great session. I will see. Actually, I will be at Eagle Weekend. So I won't be able to host Thursday. Shamika, are you able to host Thursday? Or are you being? You know, I got you. I'm, you know, I'm going to be on anyway. So I, All right. <laughs> so Shamika will be hosting on Thursday. I'll be at Eagle Weekend. And I'll see you all next week. Bye, everyone.